Feinberg, who won the Nobel Prize for Physics, said at that conference, perhaps the greatest contribution of science to this generation will be to get rid of religion. And then he said this, and anything we scientists can do to get rid of religion ought to be done. I find that quite chilling. It smacked of a totalitarian attitude. So that's really to explain to you in part the origin of what is called the new atheism. It's a reaction against the unacceptable face of violent religion. And it's claiming that science is the tool that's got to be used to abolish religion completely. I'm going to be very honest, ladies and gentlemen. What I first say is I'm utterly ashamed of it. Utterly and completely and thoroughly ashamed. I'm ashamed that the name of Christ has ever been associated with a bomb or an AK-47 or a Molotov cocktail. So that's where I start. Shame. Jesus was accused of the very thing that the new atheists now accuse Christianity of. I pointed that out to Christopher Hitchens, and I said, Christopher, I just don't understand you. And he said, why not? Well, I said, you see, you are accusing Christians of the same thing Christ was accused of, and he hadn't realized that. Now, the important thing for us to realize next is, Pilate, who was a clever and powerful Roman soldier, was allergic to anybody claiming that they were a king and they were interested in a violent political overthrow of the Roman occupation. So he conducted the trial himself, which is very unusual. In his eyes, of course, Jesus was some little upstart. Normally, a very junior lawyer would have conducted the trial, but he, no, he conducted himself and he was running the country. And so the question was put to Jesus, are you a king? In the political sense, of course, are you a threat to Rome? The answer was this. You have said, I am a king. Yes, I am a king in that sense. But not in the sense you think, for my kingdom is not of this world. Otherwise, my servants would have been fighting so that I should not be delivered to the Jewish authorities. My kingdom is not now of this world. No, rather, to this end I was born. And to this end I came into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. And Pilate famously said, what is truth? I'm not sure that he was being cynical. I think maybe he was thinking, what on earth has truth got to do with politics and power and violence? It's got to do with philosophy departments, hasn't it? And he went out to the crowd and said he found Jesus innocent. This is vastly important, ladies and gentlemen. You see, people that take up weapons, as they've done sadly in my country, to defend Christ and his message are not following him. They're denying him. So by definition, they're not Christian because a Christian is a follower of Jesus. And you will remember, won't you, the story. Perhaps you've never read it. It's a very interesting story that when they came to arrest Jesus, a couple of the disciples had managed to find swords. They weren't very good at using them. So Peter took a terrific swipe with a sword, and he was trying to cut the head off a man, but he missed, and he cut his ear off. Do you remember that? Very interesting story. Now, 
I can't go into it now. You may want to ask me afterwards. I actually believe that Christ literally restored the ear. But you'd be very dull not to see the subtext. And it's this. If you use weapons to defend Christ, you will cut the ears off people in a very big way. See, many of my atheist friends, and I have many, and I have friends in other religions, many, but they won't listen to what I have to say about the Christian message. Why? Their ears are cut off because they've seen the violence that results from disobeying Christ. I can't make that point too strongly. What happened in Northern Ireland, the religious dimension, results from disobeying Christ's explicit command to put the sword away. My kingdom is not of this world, otherwise my servants would have been fighting. And of course, Pilate knew that what he said was correct because Pilate would have had the report of the centurion who led the arrest party and he would have known about the incident with the sword and that Jesus repaired the man's ear and told the disciples not to be so silly. So this is the first major point tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on the side of Christianity. People who take weapons to defend Christ or his message are not Christian. Now, when I noticed the title of the book, The God Delusion, I could see immediately it was a very risky title. Delusion has got psychiatric overtones. Dawkins actually mentions that. And I thought, why don't I go, since I'm not a psychiatrist and he's not, why don't I ask what the psychiatrists say? And I discovered the past president, recent past president, of the Royal College of Psychiatrists writing, Andrew Sims. And what he writes is very revealing. He says the advantageous effect of religious belief and spirituality on mental and physical health is one of the best kept secrets of psychiatry and medicine. If the findings of the huge volume of research on this topic had gone in the opposite direction and it had been found that religion damages your mental health, it would have been front page news in every newspaper in the country. Now, the interesting thing about this is that these studies are, as near as they can be made, serious scientific studies. Dawkins writes God off as a delusion and seems to be totally unaware of this research. That's not very impressive. And when you read Andrew, Faith's book, Andrew Sims' book, he actually wrote a book called Is Faith a Delusion? And I leave you to read it yourselves since it's not the topic for tonight. But he points out on those things that we can measure. Just listen to this. In the majority of studies, religious involvement is correlated with well-being, happiness, life satisfaction, hope, optimism, purpose, meaning in life, higher self-esteem, better adaptation to bereavement, greater social support, less loneliness, lower rates of depression, faster recovery from depression, lower rates of suicide, fewer positive attitudes towards suicide, less anxiety, less psychosis, lower rates of alcohol and drug abuse, less delinquency, less criminal activity, greater marital stability. That's not bad, is it? It's out there. And this is not just one little study. This is the result of what's called a meta-study, a study of studies. And Sims is making the point that we're not told about it. Why not? Well, I can leave you to guess. It seems to me to be one of the scientific evidences. And of course, if Christianity is true, you would expect it to produce well-being. Of course you would. You see, Dawkins, and I keep hearing his voice in the back of my head because 
uh, in interacting with him, he'd say, well, uh, of course, uh, just because my worldview is bleak doesn't prove it's wrong. Well, I say, of course, but it doesn't prove it's right either. And if the correlation is not between atheism and well-being, but with belief in God and well-being, then it seems to me that's part of the positive evidence. But I must stop and give you a chance to uh, ask one or two questions.